morning everybody hope you're all okay I'm just going to um, see if I can oops here we go I'm gonna keep my chat here I think I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit okay, so that. I'll turn my sound down and then I can see if anybody's chatting to me or not uh, so I'm uh, what am I doing working on um, Vinny again this morning um, so the reason that I'm kind of doing quite a lot of this work um, live let's Vinny just have another to get himself comfortable um, is just because I you know I wanted to um, I wanted to sort of like share with you you know quite a few techniques and everything and, and draw Vinny and, and plus you know we're all kind of holed up in our houses and I haven't got anything to do so I thought you know do do this one hoping to do them completely uh via live stream which would be quite nice and um um you know and then if you want to have a go at drawing them and stuff you you can do and i can save all the links in one place and then it's it's almost like a, a tutorial i guess um and the 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 reason i have to finish him <laughs> is because somebody's bought him already <laughs> So, so somebody contacted me last night said they wanted to buy him which is amazingly incredible um so i've decided to donate um the cost of the portrait to um, a local charity um that's uh, that has set up for um you know this awful virus for people who've been affected by this awful virus so um that's another really good reason for finishing him <laughs> She doesn't want a half finished portrait, so um, yeah, uh, I think uh, I think that should be quite nice, really. I'm hoping you can all hear me. I'm just gonna. Good morning, everybody. Oh yeah, Everyone you can okay? hear me. I'm just going to. Um, you can hear me. That's fine. That's all right. I'm just going to close that, do that, and then that's it. Oh, that's good. Brilliant. I never know whether my sound's working or not. I get it working, and then everything goes to pot again. So, yeah. So that's the reason why I, I thought I'd, I'd live stream everything, just to kind of keep people company if they're a bit lonely or, um, you know. So, and then I've been doing it on Facebook and on um, YouTube so that people can kind of choose some people don't have Facebook you see so it's quite nice to do a little bit over on YouTube as well and then I'm keeping everybody company so I hope you're all well this morning I've um, been chatting to Australia this morning <laughs> I've been uh, sort of helping a few people with different things um, uh, interesting conversation with somebody about a white dog on a white background um, and it's it's funny isn't it when we look at something that's white we we just go it's white it's white and I can't possibly you know draw that on white paper um, and actually when you actually put white in over the top of it um, it's, it's not white at all um, you know it's um, it's it's bizarre how unwhite white is so I'm just trying to get my um, my Wi-Fi is a bit bit crazy at the minute so oh hi everybody it's lovely to have you here so thank you you're probably all getting completely bored um of my wittering on but i've got a cup of tea here somewhere as well get a cup of bit of tea they ran out of my usual yorkshire tea in my supermarket which i was devastated about and um Anyway, so I started to drink Earl Grey, and I oh, I absolutely love it. I do, I, I drink my tea quite weak. Um, I used to drink it quite strong with milk in, but then when I was working in the um, in the Middle East, the the milk they have there is is it's not the same as the milk in the UK. Um, so I ended up starting to drink my tea black. Um, so I can only drink it black now, um, and um, you know, and I have it quite weak and uh yeah they 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 ran out of my favorite tea so i'm drinking earl grey and it's oh it's so nice <laughs> i could just drink tea all day oh thank you thank you very much 
it's, sound is a funny thing. I, I really struggle with sound. I mean, I've got a really... Oh, in fact, I should bring my microphone a bit closer. I'll probably be shouting at you now. Um, I've got a really good micro, uh, microphone. Um, but I but I still... I think it's the technical side of stuff. I think it's the... Um, um, you know, the input, output, that type of stuff. My brain doesn't really compute very well with stuff like that. So um, I've been wanting somebody, what I really want is somebody to come set it all up and it show me exactly what to do. But there's there's nobody exists. And of course, I can't have anybody in the house at the minute, but nobody exists that does that or I can't find anybody who does that, which is a bit irritating. I'm just going to shift him over a little bit. Um, and what am I using here? This is Polychromos Cold Grey uh, 6. Um, so, uh, the, the colors I use, are. Uh, I guess I go with tone with a dog like this. It's more tone, isn't it? Because there's not a huge amount of color in it. Well, there is, there's quite a lot of color in here, but, but it's tone more than anything. So just getting those, um, just getting those tones in, but you can just, um, you know, play around with your pressure to get light, dark, all that type of stuff. So he's got these little wispy bits coming in. Bless him. I gave him a bath yesterday. And uh, he hates having a bath. He absolutely hates having a bath. Um, and um, we took all of the we took the car, all of the cars. We took the cars out of the drive and, and shut the gates in the drive um, so that he could kind of run free. But oh, my God, I'm chasing him around with a hose pipe. <laughs> um, but it's lovely warm water from the hose. But it's um, he absolutely detests having a bath. So we bath both of them. We bath both him and Slipper. Um, so they're all nice and clean now. If you like wheat tea, then the best is random tea, if you can get it any research. Ooh, I shall have a look at that. I do like weak tea. I, I mean, mine is literally, I put the tea bag in and just dip it a couple of times and that's it. So it's almost like sort of tea-flavoured water. I was on YouTube searching for Excel info and I saw you were on. Oh, hurrah. Okay. <laughs> How nice. <laughs> um, yeah, just popping up all over the place at the minute. So uh, it's um, it's quite nice. I do quite like to have a little bit of company. All my children are still asleep at the moment, you see, so I don't have any company um, this morning. I've just got my, my doggies. We've been for a walk. Um, it's, it's all right here. It's a little bit overcast, actually, but um, it's quite nice. Um, and like I say, I want to get I want to get Vincent finished, um, and then uh, sort of set him aside to be all framed up, and then he'll be he'll be off to his new home. I think he might be going to the Netherlands. I think I think that's where the person lives. I'm not sure, um, but I'm just so happy that um, you know somebody somebody wants him. Um, you know, I just think it'd be so nice. I was wondering actually, all of the people who were drawing Vinny, you know, with me. I was wondering maybe we could do some sort of like an, an auction off and either, um, you know, sort of make some. Now, oh, have I got this ear the wrong size? Let's have a look. Doing my usual thing of talking and not listening at or concentrating at all at what, what I'm doing. Let's just get this ear in the right, the right place. Um, yeah, I was I was thinking it would be quite nice to, um, you know, maybe raise some money either for um you know, people affected by this awful virus or uh, maybe like a, um, a deer hound rescue or something like that be quite nice. You know, and we could we could maybe set up a page or something where everybody's got their pictures of um, of Vinnie and, um, you know, we can maybe do like a little auction or something. I thought it might be quite nice, really. I do like to um, I support charities quite a lot and I do like to to, you know, um, help raise awareness and raise money and all of that for different causes so uh, I thought that might be quite nice I might put something out see if anybody's interested because there are some amazing pictures of Vinny absolutely amazing um, what I'm what I think I would really like to do actually is to kind of download everybody's um, everybody's pictures that they've done and maybe do like a montage and do like a bit of a print um, I'd quite like to have that on my wall actually I thought that might be quite nice. Um, missed the second video. I've been looking for it on YouTube, but you can't find it. That's because it's on uh, Facebook. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, Marguerite, is that I'm going to um, I'm going to put a post up with all, once I've finished all of the links all together. 
um, so that you can watch the whole thing if you want. Sorry, I can't stay, but catch up. Vinny's looking great. Yeah, bless him. Um, yeah, it's on. It's the second part is on YouTube, on Facebook even. Um, you know, so. Uh, but I'm going to put all of the links together. So I'm just going to get this little bit here as well. It's quite hard when you've got stuff like um, hair going all over the place to kind of get. You still got to get his. Um, the, the structure of his face in the bone structure and everything and which can be a little bit tricky when you've got really long hair so that's that's oh that's okay there so i've got to do a good job now if somebody's bought him <laughs> i've got to be, might have to redo him <laughs> um so and again, I think I probably like I did yesterday um, on Facebook. I went in on the back on his on his other ear. Do you think that's a good idea, Penny? I I I quite like that idea, really. You know, unless somebody wants to keep to to you know to keep him, of course, you know, I'm not going to force anybody to get you know to sell their um, their picture. But I thought it'd be quite a nice idea, really, to um, you know maybe raise a little bit of awareness or you know and the the. For the for the for the um the the virus the people that are affected by the virus you know that's one of the reasons why I've done this you know is to kind of help people you know who are a bit lonely and everything so it might be quite nice I don't know I don't know I'll have a th I'll have a think I come up with all of these different ideas and everything and and um, <laughs> I get all really excited I have so many ideas in my head it's unbelievable um, you know I I. It's usually when I'm walking the dogs and I'll I'll be, you know, thinking around I'm like, oh, that's a really good idea. And then by the time I've got home, I've forgotten what the idea is. <laughs> I need to start dictating all of my thoughts as I'm walking the dogs. So uh, it's funny. But it is, I, d I do find... Oh, Vinny, for goodness sake, keep still. Did you not get up? Oh. Oh, he's very tired, very tired after his bath yesterday. So, um, yeah, I do. I, I have so many different ideas. I find um, when I'm walking the dogs, it's the it's the best time for um, best time for, you know, thinking about things. And um, I tend to um, I tend to visualize my day. So if I've got something in my day that I don't really enjoy doing, it's usually postage or wrapping parcels up or something like that. I have to um, I have to visualize myself doing it so that I actually do do it. Um, I find if I've kind of visualised my day, then um, uh, you know it's easier. It's easier for me to do it. A bit weird like that. Um, right. So I'm gonna. I'm just going to start to fill in um, a bit of his ear. Uh, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the polychromos. I think. I'm start to get a little bit of this black in, and then like I did yesterday, I'm just gonna uh, flip it and put black in on the back which is going to help me get the depth of um, of the colour and everything in there. So um, when I was chatting yesterday about this, I'm using the Polydraw 0.75 film for this. I've not used it before. It's nice, but I'm not getting the same quality or the same amount of layers as I do on the graphics drafting film. So if you're fancying using the drafting film, I'd definitely say go for... Um, uh, uh go for the graphics it's um you know you can get more layers on and the, the quality seems to be a little bit better not that there's anything wrong with this you know and i've used polydraw quite a bit but um i think i definitely prefer the graphics tree climbing oh gosh i can't remember the last time i climbed a tree i think it was about 45 years ago <laughs> I did, did one for my local cat and rabbit rescue auction. I think it's a great to support the rescues. Oh, that sounds really nice. Yeah, so something like that I think would be really quite nice, actually. Um, you know, it would be... Um, I think it would be nice. I don't know whether... That, well, there must be some deer hound rescues. So, uh, yeah, I'll have a look into that. So I'm just keeping on sitting back. I need to get this bit in here. This bit in here needs to be quite dark because this is actually part of the ear. So it's all quite sort of sketchy at the minute. Um, 
and quite quick actually this is but this has been quite a speedy a speedy drawing um you know considering that the, the eyes and the nose do take up quite a lot of time it's um you know we've done quite a bit really you don't even have good ideas <laughs> i can't climb trees i'm scared of heights <laughs> oh dear well i can't climb trees now god i can hardly sort of climb up the you know the verge on the side of the road let alone let alone a tree um a very small tree i could probably climb a really small tree we used to have the most amazing climbing tree at the bottom of our garden where i was growing up it was a copper was it a copper beech i think it was a copper beech it was um a tree that was uh, protected and it had uh, the most incredible um it kind of grew up and then kind of went round and then you had the the trunk kind of then went on a it was it was sort of horizontal to the ground um the most amazing tree um i mean i don't know how many hundreds of years old it was but um it was oh we had swings in there and we had a house in there and uh, oh it was amazing right at the bottom of the garden you had to wade through all of the nettles to get to it but it was um, that was a really good climbing tree. You could fit probably about ten people sitting on the um, on the the horizontal bit of the trunk. Um, oh, it's, it's such a good tree. Uh, okay, so still being a little bit messy. I just want to sort of block this bit in, and you'll know that if you've watched the other ones, you'll know what a how averse I am to blocking in large areas of dark colour. I find it really hard. Um, so I'm just going to do this. Then what we'll do is we'll put some um, some little bits of hair and everything in there and then I'll flip it over um, and we'll put some of the dark on the back. So I don't know why I find it so hard to draw um, blocks of dark. It's, it's um, very weird. This is all looking very messy. Um, and then I think I'm going to try and do some blending with the um, Mars razor as well. It's a really good eraser. Um, well, I don't use it as an eraser. I use it for blending. Um, but it's, it's really good on the drafting film. Let's get some of those little bits of hairs on there. And then once I've finished um, Vinny, then I am straight on to drawing a ram, which I'm really looking forward to. I've got him all drawn out and um, I'm very excited to start that one. It's got some fantastic horns. So um, that's a good one. And I've just been um, given permission to draw the most beautiful owl as well. So I've got, what have I got coming up? I've got the ram, I've got a swan. I've got an owl, I've got, I'm doing a pine martin, um, which I'm doing for my patrons. And then I'm, what else have I got? Um, oh, I've got, I've got some beautiful big cat pieces. Um, oh, and I've got a hummingbird. A really, really brightly coloured hummingbird. So that's going to be an interesting one. Um, I do like to challenge myself. <laughs> And then I've got all my commission pieces as well in in uh, in there too. So um, busy, busy, very busy. I might do the hummingbird on the um, Icarus board. Actually, that would be that would be a that would be an interesting tutorial on the um, Icarus board. I think that'd be quite fun. So I turned all my notifications off, but they're still coming through, which is a bit irritating. I've turned all my notifications off on my Mac and I've put it onto night shift and they're still coming through. Um, could climb ladders if I was harnessed. <laughs> I should be more afraid than I am. Once I climbed 30 metres without and think it was dangerous. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's funny. It is It is. It is funny blocking in the colours. I mean, isn't it funny how we... Um, you know, I used to be so brave when I was younger. Um, you know, riding horses and jumping and all of that type of stuff. And um, and as you get older, it's just you lose that braveness. Um, it's, a, it's funny, isn't it? 
Is it just the ram's head you'll be doing or the full body? It's the ram's head, a uh, close up of the ram's head, both horns, and then a, a little bit of the body um, to the left of it. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's quite a nice photo actually. Lots and lots of texture, a lot of texture in there. Um, so it's, uh, he's got a, a very um, wiry, woolly face. Quite the 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 the, um, the wool is quite short, but then the horns are curled round. So um, you know that's I've got him all drawn out, drawn out. I've got him all drawn out on the pastel mat. Um, I can't wait to start. I've got in my head, you know, how I'm going to be doing it, and um, you know the techniques and everything. So. Um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that one. It's getting the texture of the wool. Um, you know, that's what's going to be the, you know, the interesting part, I think. Because I don't want to have to draw every single tiny little bit of wool. That's something I don't want to have to do. So I need to kind of devise a method um, and a technique of sort of, it, it will probably be around putting the, putting the pigment down and then using something that's textured to pull it back off again. So it might be that I use quite a bit of scotch tape. Um, it might be that I get something like frisk tape, um, put that on and just sort of draw squiggly lines over the top of that. So I get I get the, the texture over the entire area rather than just doing tiny little bits. I'm not sure yet. Um, I might have to get some frisk tape from Amazon. Um, but um, yeah, I've got some I've got some ideas in my head about what I'm going to be doing. But the, the thing I'm really looking forward to is the is the horns and the texture on the horns. I'm really looking forward to that. So these ears are a bit rubbish, aren't they? I think I'm going to get my um, I'm going to get my Mars razor. Um, and I'm just going to sort of start to just smooth this out a little bit. So it's not, I'm not erasing with this. I'm just sort of blending and smoothing the colour. Um, so I'm using it very gently. But it's, um, I've, I bought this as an eraser and then I realised that it, it, on the film it wasn't the, the best eraser. But actually it was really good at just blending out the um, the pigment. Um, you can see it's just starting to blend out quite nicely there. So I'm using it really, really gently, but it's um, it's quite good on the film because it, the film doesn't you can't really get anything to blend on the film, but the Mars razor does work quite nicely. That's all looking okay. And then what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to use the slice tool. Um, and just start to bring in some of these little bits of hair. So if you haven't used a slice tool before, this one's the um, the manual pen cutter, and it, they've got a ceramic blade. Um, I've got a little video up on um, YouTube actually that that shows you how to how how I use it, how to change the blade and all that type of stuff. But it's um it's a really really good knife. It's it's much gentler on the um, surface of the paper and the film and everything than a than a, a steel bladed knife, um, and you you've got a little bit more control and you've also got sort of you can use sort of like the back of it that you know um, the tip of it all of that type of stuff to get sort of different different sort of strength different amounts of pigment that you take off. It's um, it's pretty good. So I'm just bringing in little bits of hair in there because what I want to do is when I flip it and go in on the back, um, let's just wipe all of that off. Um, I want to see where I've got some of these stray hairs because I don't want to go over the top of those. So just bringing these stray hairs in, it, it allows me to see where I can put extra bits of shadow. It just makes everything look a little bit more real, really. What kind of a razor is that? This one is the um, it's the Staedtler Mars razor. So it is an eraser and it will erase. But on the film, I just use it gently to blend. So let's just bring in this a little bit more in here. there as well okay that's all 
good. And then I'm going to use my, oops, uh, this is the Derwent drawing, this is the ivory black. A really, 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 really good black, a really good pencil um, to use. I'm just going to come over the top of everything that I've just put in there and just make it a little bit darker, smoother still. This is a very soft pencil. Um, the drawings are absolutely gorgeous on drafting film. Um, they're, they're so smooth and so creamy. Um, they're just fantastic pencils. Um, and the colour range that they've got, the D Derwent seem to have some really good, um, you know, uh, colours in their in the ranges of their pencils. Um, but the drawings have got super, super colours for, um, you know, the sort of like the, the natural world, wildlife, landscapes, that type of stuff. Um, they really do have good colours. OK, so got this little ear in there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it. Probably don't recognise me on here, but I messaged you with the owl on Facebook. Ah, oh, hi, Beth. Yes, it's your amazingly beautiful. Um, oh, yes, I, yes, your owl, the, the digital one. Um, right, let me just put this in the right place and then I know what I'm doing. Um, the digital owl is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I think, is it the digital owl? Have I got that right? I think it's the digital owl. Beautiful, beautiful it was. Um, I'm in, so in awe of people who do digital work. Let me know that it's, it, that is you, Beth, because I might have got the wrong one. <laughs> it's, it's Evie joining. Oh, I, um, no, she's she moderates the, 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 the big live ones, um, you know, that I've kind of sort of planned for a while. Um, so I don't think she knows about this one. Um, she's probably still in bed. <laughs> Beth, thank you. And yeah, the digital out are oh, that it is beautiful, really, really nice. Is that do you tend to do mostly digital work, Beth? Then, um, because someone was asking me yesterday whether I fancied doing um digital um stuff, and it's just I can I re I think it looks absolutely gorgeous, but I just don't I think it looks too hard for me to do. <laughs> too hard for my basic skills um but it, yeah it was really lovely oh, it's my you'll get a bit of music now my son's just come back from his um he's just had to go out to do the shopping um so he's gone gone relatively early so he beats all of the cues it's um might be a little bit of noise the dogs might end up barking uh, right, I'm just going to put in a dark here as well. So this is on the back that I'm drawing now. So I flipped the film over and I'm just drawing on the back. And then just bring that in there. And I'm going to bring a little bit of dark into here as well. So you can see I'm not being particularly um, careful. <laughs> Um, about where I'm putting stuff. The only thing about when you're drawing in on the back is um, now then have I got that? It's, no, it's just funky. It's all right. It's just funky. Don't worry. Um, the only thing about going in on the back. Oh, have I got this? Oh, I'm I'm drawing the wrong ear. I'm drawing the completely the wrong ear. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's fine. Um, yeah, the only thing going in on the back is that when you um, when you come to um, take anything out, when you flip it back over, the problem the problem lies in the fact that you forget that you've drawn on the back of it um, and you try and take stuff out and then you don't understand why you can't take any pigment out and it's because it's all on the back. Um, so that's, um, that's quite amusing when that happens. So, so we can see that that's really nice and black now. But I can still take out. I can still take out some pigment, and you'll still kind of be able to see it. But it will be. It won't be bright white. So we can still get some um, fur lines and everything in there. But it will be showing up what's on the on the back of the film. So you still get that nice texture, but it will be almost like a grey colour rather than it being white.
Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, using some coloured pencils, that'd be really good. But your digital work is lovely. Very, very nice. Okay, so I'm just going to bring a little bit more texture into here. And I might just use my Tombow eraser just to... So I use a combination of Slice, Tombow, um, any other eraser that I can get my hand on just to um you know just to pull in and get the texture really if i use the slice and it's looking a little bit too harsh then i'll bring the tombow in over the top and just soften it off a slightly um, so that's all looking okay and then i'm going to use the cold gray it's the cold gray four and we'll just bring a bit more A bit more hair into here. I don't really need to worry about Vinny's hair, where, whether it's in the right place or not, because it's so messy and scruffy that, um, you know, it really doesn't matter. And then I'm just going to just bring a little bit more pigment in where we've got these the texture in here on the front of his face. Oh, I haven't had a chance to have a look at it, to be honest. Um, I ended up um, having a date with Pride and Prejudice last night and a, and, and a Chinese meal. <laughs> so uh, I, I kind of um, haven't had a look, but I will. I will, I promise. And I'm, um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you, um, you know, your, your creations and everything. It'd be good. So again, just coming in here and just sort of like adding in some sort of random hair, you know, rather than um, rather than trying to draw everything beautifully. He's much better with a dog like this to be a, a little bit random and messy. And that's why I like doing these, um, you know, these dogs that have got hair that go everywhere because you don't have to be really particular. <laughs> You don't, you know, you can be a bit sort of um, put a bit of hair in. Yeah, that looks right. Off we go. Um, you know, and you don't have to be like really, really specific about where you're putting all of the, um, you know, all of the colour and everything. Um, but, I, but I'd be interested to know your thoughts on establishing routine when drawing. I struggle to walk away from my work and end up not taking breaks. Oh, that's what I do. <laughs> Um, that's exactly what I do, Alana, um, because I get so engrossed. Um, and, and so now what happens for me, it's very unusual for me to be drawing in the morning, um, actually, um, because I tend to do most of my admin um, in the morning. So um, emails, messages, social media, that type of stuff. Um, so I, I spend quite a lot of time um in the mornings on doing admin and I and previous to being in lockdown I ended up doing um sort of sitting and starting my drawing around seven o'clock at night whereas now um I'm 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 trying to do I'm trying to definitely draw every single day because that's what keeps me sane um and because I've been doing some of these live live streams and everything it's easier for me to do them in the morning because that's when the house is quieter, um, you know, and I don't have to be telling the children to be quiet all of the time. So um, it's definitely easier for me to do it in the morning. But I um, once I get going with a drawing, I I just get so engrossed, um, you know, and I can look up and it will be two o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know, because I just get so carried away with um, whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, you know, so I, I think uh, it depends on the person. I'm um, I don't really need a routine as such. Um, you know, some people really thrive on having a routine and knowing exactly what it is that they're going to be doing. I tend to I need to I need to work out if I've got to do something that I don't like doing, like my postage, like I said before, then I do need to really sort of work, work out that and make sure that I do that, um, you know, at some point. Otherwise, nothing would ever get posted. But, um, uh, you know, as for as for drawing, I, I mean, I would draw for 12 hours a day if I could, um, you know, because that is what I absolutely love. 
um, you know, and I just I just don't get tired of it. So, um, you know, I think it's I think if it's affecting you, then you, you need you need to be careful. Um, you know, I, yeah, working for 12 hours in one go is never a good thing to do, is it? But, um, you know, reality is a little bit different, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, right, we're going to start working on his nose a little bit here. Uh, I have to catch up with a lot of work. I wish my colour pencils arrived. I did eyes and nose with watercolour pencils, but I said, oh no, keep going. They'll be fine with the watercolour pencils. Um, it, you know, it'll be it'll be absolutely fine. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Maybe it's an artist thing to get so engrossed. Time flies. I know, it really does. Well, we just get into the flow, don't we? We just get into sort of like, um, you know, I, I get into sort of like a... a if I'm if I'm not recording and I'm not talking to anybody, I can just get completely and utterly lost in my drawings, um, you know, to the point where it's almost like I have to wake myself up. Um, you know, it, it's um, you just get into that flow state, uh, you know, and it's um, it's it's just it's a wonderful place to be. Right. So we're coming down into this bit here, which is quite tricky. Um, I need to find myself a different colour. I'm going to use the cocoa. Um, this is the Pablo cocoa, and it's it's like a bit of a, a as you would imagine, a bit of a chocolatey, a chocolatey colour. Um, and I'm just going to start to bring in a little bit of detail in around his nose now, um, because I want to get this bit here done. And I find this bit the the trickiest uh, because you've got to get that perspective right, and you've got to get it so that it actually looks like the hair is kind of growing on the nose but also going backwards Vinny's got a very long nose um, and this this photo is quite nice actually because it's um it doesn't over lengthen his nose so he doesn't he doesn't look crazy crazy so again I'm just um just going in and just putting a few little markers and everything in get all of the colour and tone and everything in first just watching where my hair detail is going and then I can put the details in afterwards but I'm still I'm still concentrating and thinking about my um, uh, hair texture so he's a little bit a little bit sort of warmer warmer brown again i've got to be really careful that i don't um i don't make it look as if his hair is lifting off in a particular way on his face it is quite flat oh marie you're talking to me in french <laughs> um the oh i think you i think you um i think you replied to, i think you messaged me yesterday talking about the number and the make of the pencils i do tend to um i do tend to let you know this one's the pablo karen dash pablo coco um i don't know about the numbers i don't know i don't use any of the numbers on the pencils i just use the names so i do tend to um try to tell you the the, the names of the um, and the makes of the pencils if if I don't, it's oh now hang on a second I've got this in the wrong place. If I don't, is because I've um, um, I've got two engrossed and I've forgotten. Um, I do I, I I do try to tell you the names because I, I I know it's quite important. Um, you know, especially for those starting out because it's it, it can be quite difficult. Um, you know, making a decision as to what color you want to use. Um, you know and having somebody give you those colors is kind of like a little bit of a kick start so i do try to i know on my patreon um my teaching channel i give when i put a tutorial up i give materials lists and i name every single color that i've used and i am getting better at remembering to um name all of the colors that i use as well but it's um the problem is you get you just get a little bit engrossed i mean my my tutorial videos if anybody's one of my patrons on here you'll know that you know i, I try to give you everything i try to um you get to hear my initial thoughts of you know why i'm doing something i'll talk to you about pressure i'll talk to you about you know um you know how to put the the pencil on the paper all of that type of stuff i, I really talk you through um, you know how to get the different sort of techniques and everything on on the paper 
um, and sometimes I do forget to name the colours which I know can be a little bit frustrating you know especially if you're new to it because you know everybody needs a bit of hand holding at the beginning um, you know and it's um, it's it's quite it's quite you know starting out with colour pencil is daunting enough and having to try and make your own choices for your colours makes it it can make it a little bit you know tougher so I do try to um, remember to give you the colours so again I'm just trying to get the feel for this hair along here and it's um you just got to get it going in the right right direction really and once you've got it going in the right direction then you're kind of away really but it's um it's getting it going so i'm not worrying too much about the, these sort of like detaily tufty bits because i can put those in later i just want to get this layer of color in and then i can start to bring in a bit more detail It tells me drawing is equivalent of Bonnie drawing for 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, I do, I do. Well, I mean, it, it takes me quite a long time to create a piece, but um, I think my hand just moves really fast. <laughs> I think where I, I think it's because I sort of like scribble. I think that's that's why I do a lot of scribbling. I'm never very careful. Can we all just take a moment to appreciate how wonderful this community is? Everyone is so nice and cozy. Oh, do you know, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, and hi, Sarah. Um, I only just joined in to have a look. What paper is this getting done on? Catriona, it's on uh, drafting film. It's on the Polydraw 75. But yes, absolutely, Loli. It's, um, do you know, I think like like attracts like, um, you know, and, and if you're... I I just want to help people and I just want to be kind to people and all of that type of stuff and I, I'm absolutely amazed um well I'm not amazed I'm not amazed um I'm I'm over over the moon and overjoyed that um there is a, a whole community um that is just fantastic you know and they're so kind and they're so supportive and they want to share and help other people and it's it's amazing it's absolutely amazing so i i completely agree just getting my putty eraser out a little bit again just to get a bit more of this um not that i've gone wrong um well it doesn't matter if i've gone wrong but um just to get a little bit of the idea of this um paler bit up at the top of his nose here That's looking okay. Um, so the cocoa, the, the the Pablo pencils are really they they are really lovely, um, and this cocoa is a really good colour because it's a grey, but it's this sort of lovely warm grey. Um, it's a it's just yeah. Sometimes you find a colour that's just perfect. And this one is pretty perfect. And we've got loads of details and stuff in there, but I'm not going to put those in yet. I'm just going to, I just want to block in so that we get a real feel for his little face. Bless him. Little gitty is. <laughs> oh dear, he's so funny. He just wants to fight poor old Slipper all the time. He just wants to fight her. She gets a bit annoyed with him. So I guess he's still only a, t a little puppy. He's a st well, little puppy. He's still only nine months old. So he's, um, you know, he's he's at that stage, that particularly naughty stage. There's some really nice texture and everything around his um, little nose here, which I can. Um, I will try and get in with the slice tool um, once we, once we, uh, in fact, I'm going to start using like a purpley colour. Um, where is my purpley colour? There it is. I'm going to use a little bit of violet grey um, around his little schnozzle down here. So this is the luminance violet grey. Um, a really, 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 really good, useful colour. 
So this is one of the, I have like a core pencil list that I send out to different people and it's on my Patreon and everything. And um, this is, this is one of the colours that's on my um, core pencil list. It is um, such a good colour to use with others. Um, you know, you can use it for highlights, you can use it with oranges. Um, you know, it's, it's just a, a good colour. And the luminance are really nice on the drafting film. So that combined with the sort of like the warmth of that cocoa gives it a really nice feel. And again, I'm not being particularly careful. Um, you know, it's just, just whacking it all in. And then this is going to be a bit darker down here, but if we get these colour in and blocked in, then we can start to add a little bit more detail and information down there as well. Uh, and then I'm going to put a little bit of this into where I put this cocoa up here as well. I think one of the things that um, is quite difficult to get your head around when you're doing coloured pencil work is um, half the time you think you need to put all of the detail in straight away, you know, and you 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 don't. Uh, I mean, if you want to, you can. Uh, you know, there's no there's no definitive way of using any particular medium. It's you know, it's entirely up to you. But um, I think for me, it's sort of like my development has I, I have realised that actually it's so much easier to get all of your sort of um you know colors blocked in tonal values blocked in um and then start to work your details even when using a really smooth paper you can do that you know your details kind of are, are almost like the last thing to come in um you know and that's that's been sort of like quite a revelation for me really to you know to understand that that that's a a, a good process to use um, you know, I mean, it took a while it, and it's not a, it, it's not, um, the, the problem is when you look at a dog like this, when you look at an animal like this, all you see is the detail and all of the thing, all, all you think about is how on earth am I going to get that detail in? Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of tricky, um, you know, to, to sort of comprehend how to ignore the detail to begin with. Um, you know, and then um, work the you know work the detail in afterwards. So it's a kind of you, you know you're battling away with what you what you feel you should be doing, and then what you know you should be doing. Okay, so I'm going to get a bit more dark in there. Um, it's little mouth that's good there and then let's go back to more of a gray blue oh thank you thanks Michaela that's kind so let's just get a little bit more of this sort of um, blocked in here and then we can bring the texture in with the with the eraser and start to get a little bit more of a feel for the layering of the hair in there So it's quite easy with a with a piece like this to kind of get a little bit carried away <laughs> and just whoa, off you go and then you, you're like oh hang on a second we've got quite a lot of sort of stray hairy bits here and again if we can just kind of get a feel for those it's then a little bit easier to sort of like do the bits underneath this side's a bit um a bit tidier. So I don't know whether anybody was on um, Jason's live stream yesterday. So I was there for, I was there for about an hour, I think. And um, oh, it was so much fun. I, I, you know, it's so nice to see people, um, you know, using different mediums and everything. I, I must admit, I was sitting there going, oh, I really need to use pastels. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he made it look so easy, 
um, you know, and uh, we just we'll put this here and this here and this here, and then hey, Presty, you've got an eye. I'm like, what? Um, you know, so it was uh, it was a good a good video to watch, really, really good video to watch, and so nice that he's doing those live streams. Um, I just um, I, I maybe need to get myself a mask and sort of like a I don't know something so that I can use pastels, but they just um, as soon as as even if I get the pan pastels out you know and and start to use them for background that my voice goes um the, you know the dust just gets i i don't know what it is i don't have asthma or anything like that but my voice just disappears um and it's so frustrating um you know so but then i, I do love my color pencils so you know i think i would feel very very guilty if i started using um if i started using pastels <laughs> it was good wasn't it it was good i mean he's such a nice guy um, he's got such a nice voice as well but uh, yeah it was fun it was fun to do he's he's definitely one of my um, the people I really really admire uh, ba -ba -ba. right let's have a look at just putting a little bit of hair down here down here what I'm trying to do here is kind of get this like there's like a little ridge where he's cheekbone is where there's sort of like a a flap of hair sitting over the top of the other hair that's kind of why I've got that ridgy bit there um, and again I don't want to make his face too too fat it actually comes sort of here and this is the this is one of the the, the problems when you're doing a, a dog like this and you you have a really rubbish line drawing like I have. Uh, that's why I prefer to do everything freehand really because then I can kind of really concentrate on, you know, what it is that I'm doing and where I'm putting stuff. I'm sitting right back here because I need to see the whole the whole animal, the whole of his face to be able to get this bit kind of you know in proportion with that bit. Um, so I know there's a huge amount of there's loads and loads of different techniques you can use, um, you know, for kind of uh, drawing, transferring, all of that type of stuff. And um, when I when I was first starting out, um, everything I did was was f always freehand, and I always started with the eye. I just started with one eye, and then worked the eye up, um, and then worked from the eye out, and that's how that's how I that's what came naturally to me that's what I did um, and then I realized you could do like a bit of an outline and it would be quicker so once I had all my commissions and everything that's what I started to do but I tend to I mean you can see my outline it's shocking um, I tend to pref really prefer to freehand um, but I did try the grid method and <laughs> honestly I, I the, the people who use the grid method to um, to draw to create their outline you know all of that type of stuff Oh my goodness, hats off. <laughs> hats off to you. Because I was so confused. I'm like, what am I trying now? I because I have to see the whole of the animal. I've got to see the whole thing, um, you know, to be able to sort of work out where everything is. So, you know, working in like a little tiny square, I'm like, I'm completely lost. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, you know, so, uh, but it's so, it is so interesting watching, um, you know, different people work in different ways. It's... Um, you know, I find it fascinating how we all how we all work so differently. Um, you know, and it's all down to sort of personality and learning styles and all of that type of stuff. It's uh, it is very very interesting. I think there's less dust on pastel mat. No, there's it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It just I I honestly all I have to do is open a pan of pan pastel and I am coughing and my voice goes it just literally disappears it's um i'm obviously very very susceptible to i don't know either the chemicals in the pastels or what i don't know um but the i mean even the even colored pencil on pastel mat gets me coughing and i can lose my voice a little bit you can tell when i'm doing my videos on um using using pastel mat with pencils my voice starts to disappear um, it's um, it's very very strange. It's obviously you know just how how my body works, but it's a it is a shame because I I I would like to do some pastels, but 
but I love my colour pencils, so that's all right. All right, let's just get a little bit more grey down here on this little nosy nosy. It's a bit grey down here too. I won't go too far down there because I don't think you can see how to move the... Um, that's something I do all of the time as well. I go and do a load of stuff and it's completely out of camera shot. <laughs> and there's nobody to tell you. You know, there's, when you're doing it on your own, you just, you know, you're just recording videos and you've done sort of like half an hour completely out of camera shot. It's like, oh, goodness me. Or you forget to hit go when you're, when you're recording. It's like, oh, no. Right. Uh, I'm going to use the dark sepia, I think. Get some cold tea. And um, let's come back in here and just add a little bit of dark in there. So I don't know what everybody's up to today. It's um, the Easter weekend. We, um, yeah, I got my daughter watching uh, Pride and Prejudice last night, which was really nice, actually. We'd had enough of the Tiger King. <laughs> we thought we'd watch something a bit nicer. <laughs> so um, we watched Pride and Prejudice instead, which was really lovely. But I might try and find some more of those sort of um, Jane Austen -y type type films to watch because they they they're so nice because there's no nastiness in them. It's just it's just niceness, um, you know. And it's um, it's quite nice to kind of get lost in stuff like that. Freehand is so hard on Passmore. I've had to use dot grids to get the outline done. Yeah, yes. Um, I mean, to to you know, for the outline and everything, because if you if you go wrong, then it's um, you know, if you rub out, then you kind of you know you you struggle with the with the quality of the paper and everything, don't you? You know, so I do get that, but I um, I'm just I'm just much happier sort of you know um, transferring what I see on the on the on my iPad it, you know onto the paper it, it just work, works a little bit better for me that way but what I do do I mean with this I trace this off my screen I just laid my film over the top of my computer screen and um, and and did a rough a rough outline you know which was which was perfect um, but the the problem with me is I you know there'll be lines in there and I'll be like well what, what's that line there what does that equate to and then you sit and you think about what the line is and it's you know that's that's where I get completely confused where I've got lines in there and I have no idea what they're for so I end up just rubbing them out but I get I get um I'm a bit a bit of an activist you know I'm I'm sort of like I just want to get get into stuff so doing a, an accurate line drawing is something that I just I, I find so boring um so I just rush it and then and then I ended up with all these random lines and I'm like, oh, you know. Using Mitant's touch paper for the pastel yesterday. That one is very dusty to use. There's not as much dust on the pastel. Oh, there's nothing compared to... Yeah, I can imagine because um, the um, the Mitant's, that's, that's, that is like a sanded paper, isn't it? Um, you know, so you are going to have quite a lot of that um, that dust around. I know you can get these sort of um, air purifier things as well, which are supposed to be quite good. Oh, that's okay. Well, we'll we'll see you soon. I'll let you know. Um, I'll let you know about your. Um, I'll have a look at your website. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more in there. So we're starting to get a little bit of this. Um, a little bit of his hair the texture and everything coming in we're starting to get a bit of a feel for that now uh what am i going to use here i might use this which is the brownish beige yeah this is the karen dash pablo brownish beige and i'm just going to use this to just to bring in here a little bit so it's very similar to the the violet gray that i was using the the luminance violet gray and quite similar to the the cocoa, the Pablo cocoa that I was using as well. It's sort of in the same sort of tonal range, I guess, um, but just a slightly 
you know different color just to bring down here into his um around here around his little mouth area and cheeks muzzly bit muzzly area and then there's some gingery bits in there as well which we'll we'll put in at some point um and then i'm just going to bring in some of that in there as well so for me this is all about just blocking in getting all of that color blocked in and then i can go in and start to bring in a little bit of detail so i get all of that blocked in there so we've got a lot of warm colors a lot of cool colors mixing together um, because he's got a lot of different colors in his little face It's funny, he's a, he's a big dog. He's a big, big, big old dog. He's taller than I am if he stands up um, on his back feet. Um, he must weigh about 40 kilos now, over 40 kilos. And um, and he's got a tiny head. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a, um, you know, relative to the size of his brain. <laughs> but um, he's got a really tiny little head. So he's got the huge sort of athletic muscled body and this weeny little head. Bless him. Okay, so we've got some quite a lot of detail to put in, quite a lot of darker colours in there, but I just want to, you know, just get in. This is quite blue down this side and this is quite warm down this side. And I quite like getting that um that difference in um in you know in the colour temperature and all of that type of stuff. So right, and then I'm gonna use the cold grey again. Just to get this, it's got just a weird sort of fluffy, fluffy fur. Um, and then it's, and then it gets darker. So then this is much darker in here. Brush that off a little bit curious to know if you prefer pastel matter drafting film um it is purely built down to what i'm drawing on at the moment so currently um i would say i much prefer drawing on drafting film but once i get going with my next piece which is on uh, pastel mat i would say i much prefer drawing on pastel mat um i think it, it's 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 like about it's about muscle memory and stuff like that isn't it um oh i've been sent through puppy posts puppy pictures oh to have a look at those a bit later um uh yeah it's 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 to do with um it's to do with what i'm oh, where's the black what's that it's to do with what i'm drawing on at, at that moment in time as to what i prefer um i really love the drafting film for animals that are very textured so we've got fluffy fur um, you know, because you can use all of those subtraction techniques very easily. You can still use the subtraction techniques on normal paper, you know, on pastel mat and everything. But on the drafting film, they work like an absolute dream. Um, you know, you can use your erasers, you can use the knife, all of that type of stuff. And you've got the other side of the film that you can work on. So for for textured animals, um, oh, the, the drafting film is just amazing. Um, I find it very hard to do smooth things on the um, drafting film. I can use smooth things, you know, but for things like bridal work, um, you know, things that are really smooth and you've got to get a very even texture, I find that much harder on the drafting film, which is bizarre, really, because you think because it's such a smooth surface, you could get a really lovely, smooth looking, um, you know, textures on there but it's you've because you can't blend like you can on pastel mat it's much much harder so um you know for for animals that have got like leather work bridles that type of stuff horses and everything i do do quite like using the pastel mat um um, and you get a different quality as well you get a def definitely a different quality of um look and feel um from using film and pastel mat film it's almost like um you know it could almost be like a computer generated um you know piece of work just because of how it looks um you know how the pencil looks on the on the film whereas on pastel mat it definitely looks like a drawing um you know you, it definitely looks like a piece of art uh do, do both papers layer the same so 
with the pastel mat you well you can layer to your heart's content <laughs> with the pastel mat i mean if you wanted you could put like i don't know 50 60 70 layers on if you really wanted um you know and that's one of the that's one of the amazing things about pastel mat is you know the amount of layers that you can put on um sometimes you may want to put that amount of layers on especially if if something's not quite working properly and you're having to rework something or you've gone wrong then it's really useful to be able to get all of those layers in um with the drafting film you still layer the same way as in you layer your colors up um but you you're limited um i would say on the on the graphics drafting film i'm limited to probably around between 15 and 20 layers if i wanted to put 15 and 20 layers in um which i tend to not um you know i would want to um i would want to get away with just one layer if i could um you know why why put tons and tons of layers in if you can get away with just one um but but obviously it's about depth and you know all of that type of stuff so you're you're better off you know using your layering capabilities um but um so they do work in in the same way you just use your pencils in, in slightly differently with pastel mat i tend to layer light dark light dark light dark um with the um with the drafting film it's more sort of um you know just sort of picking picking colors that are going to work together um you know you don't have to sort of like put your lights out well the lights don't work over the top of the darks anyway so you kind of work light to dark with the um with the film morning janice how are you so we're still just blocking in that nice color in there i think we need to just go in a bit darker in here i think once we start to bring in a bit of that um the shaping in there then it's going to be better i don't want to end up with his nose being too wide so sitting right back here and just really look at this needs to be darker as well new to your patreon pages loving your work can i ask what size paper to use oh um yeah well this one is i don't know what this one is um i've got my i've got my um this is so look this one's about 12 by 12 by 14 that i'm working on at the minute um i tend to use sort of like ha either half half a sheet um or quarter of a sheet um and a sheet is usually a sheet of film is usually around 60 by 80 something like that and a sheet of the pastel mat is um the sheets i use are 50 by 70 so sort of you know half or a, or a quarter of that um i tend to use so um i, I like to i like to work on, on a on a relatively larger scale not huge but i don't like to work really tiny um and just because it i struggle to see um you know all of the stuff um you know and it's and it's easier for me if something's a little bit bigger because then i can fit all of the detail and everything in so um it's a bit better all right so let's just bring in a bit more down here so he is a very messy boy <laughs> you know which is quite nice because you don't have to be particular in everything that you do and it's much better for for a dog like this if you can be a little bit messy and a bit sketchy because um it kind of suits his his fur his fur type you know if you were particularly careful and everything was beautifully laid in he'd look like a, a very very well groomed dog um and it would look beautiful but it wouldn't look like vinnie because Vinny's really messy, um, you know, his hair's really messy, so it, it just wouldn't look like his character, um, you know, so it's, it's important to kind of bring the character and everything in. Just look at the end of the snowstorm. Oh, God. Oh, that's not good, Janice. Are you, you're, are you Canada? You think you are Canada, aren't you, Janice? That's, um, oh, God, that's scary. We've got, I mean, the weather here in England is is really lovely at the minute um 
you know, it's um, been very warm. So that's why we bathed the dogs yesterday, because it was so nice and warm. Right, let's have a look at just bringing in a little bit of, let's use that and the slice tool, I think. I'm just going to bring in some texture into his hair here. Um, so I'm just going to use, this is my Tombow. This is the little 2.5 Tombow Mono Zero. And this is a, an eraser, little eraser pen. And uh, when you buy, you can get them from Amazon and, you know, wherever. But when you buy them, they tend to come with, um, let's see if I've got one actually, refill. There's a new oh, here we go. So they tend to come with this. This is the refill pack. And that's what they look like. So they come with this with this little sort of plasticky bit and the eraser on the end. That's the eraser there. And then they just slot into the um, into the little pencil holder um, and they are brilliant, brilliant tools, um, you know, especially if you're working on smooth paper, sort of hot press paper. If you're working on drafting film, that type of stuff, um, they are amazing um, erasers for creating texture and stuff like that in your drawings. If you can see here, this is what I'm starting to do now is just bring in a little bit of that um, sort of texture in his in his fur here and this just helps me getting all of this texture in now and these sort of like little fur lines and everything just helps me um, be able to put even more detail in and that's what I love about working on the film that I can use techniques like this You keep on having to kind of wipe off the um, the pencil dust as well. That's a bit annoying. I always have a spring storm. Oh gosh. Well, we've we had one bit of snow in the UK, a tiny weeny little bit of amount of snow that brought the whole of the UK to a standstill, as per usual. Um, you know, it was. Uh, I think we looked out of the window and there was like a tiny bit of snow on the ground. And my uh, my youngest son, who's still at school, is like, oh. School will be closed. And I'm like, what? No, school won't be closed. <laughs> We're still going to school. Um, but um, yeah, it's uh, everybody panics in the UK when it snows. I'm lucky that I, um, my dad's um, from Switzerland. So, um, you know, when we were growing up, he knows how to drive in the snow. Um, you know, and he taught us all to drive. So, uh, you know, we all learnt how to drive in the snow and, you know, what to do and all of that type of stuff. So, um, you know, it's um, kind of pass that on to my children as well. Oh, Vinny. He's a very groany dog. And I, oh, my 15 year old has woken up so I can hear him laughing madly in his bedroom. God knows what he's doing. He's probably watching my YouTube. <laughs> Okay, so just um, just bringing in all of that nice texture into there and starting to get a nice sort of softness in his nose here as well. Do you scan or photograph your artwork to be able to sell, showcase it online? Um, what I tend to do is I, um, I'll take a picture with my iPhone. Um, the problem with the newest iPhones is that their cameras are so good that they pick up on every single tiny detail and then enhance that detail, um, which is great for taking things like, you know, nature shots and all of that type of stuff. But when you when you come to take a picture of your uh, piece of artwork that you've done, um, you don't want it to enhance every single tiny little detail because then it looks like you haven't done any blending at all. <laughs> um, so I tend to use my iPhone, but then I'll use the iPhone's editing um, tools just to sort of um, knock the graininess back down again. Um, and they've got a really, I think it's called Denoise. It's a, it's a really good function. And I just sort of add a little bit of Denoise, which just um, softens the photo back a little bit so it looks more like my actual drawing um, and then if I will scan um, the final piece especially if I'm going to do prints or something from it so I will scan um, 
and I'll use my I've got an Epsom Perfection V600 photo scanner um, and that's pretty good actually so I'm using this is the Mars Stadler again the um, Mars Razor and I'm just using this just to soften again so I don't want any really harsh lines in here so I'm just using this to soften all of those pencil strokes so not erasing just gently softening all of those pencil strokes in here and then I can start to bring in a little bit more detail and I'm going to go up into the top of his head here and soften as well because that's what I'm wanting I don't really want to see pencil strokes everywhere I want to see soft fuzzy fur um, so um, you know using techniques like this just to sort of help you soften everything back a little bit is quite good everyone has different methods of doing things different styles and it's um, you know there's no right or wrong it's just what you prefer and what you like um, you know and I, I don't really I like to, my fur to look like furry fur So just softening all of that in. I'm not using very hard pressure here either. I'm using very soft pressure. And it's just all sort of merging and blending and softening slightly. Okay, let me just give that a bit of a rub. There we go. Um, right and then let's just come back down here oh let's oops just soften down here a little bit as well so you can see it's doing nothing taking the um, pigment out but it is just blurring it a little bit merging it a bit which is nice So now I can start to bring in a little bit more um, detail into here as well. So I'm just going to blow my photograph up a bit um, and I'm just going to start to bring in a bit more detail. I need to darken his nose up a touch as well. So this is the dark sepia polychromos that I'm using here. Um, and what I can now do, because I've got some of these nice um, sort of texture lines that I've brought in with the Tombow, I can actually start to work with those. Um, and use them to help me get more shadow and little bits in in between so I can actually get my hair looking like hair the pressure I'm using is really really light here as well and we've got some darker bits down here I know um, somebody mentioned yesterday about me not having a picture next to my um, drawing, you know, and, and how it, it's more useful to have the picture next to it that you're drawing. It's it's a bit hard, um, a bit hard for me to have a printout because I don't have a printer. Um, and the, the, the company that I used to do all my printing obviously isn't, they're not working at the minute. Um, so um, what I what I try to do, but is is really difficult to get right is to have an image in the top of the um, drawing that I'm doing. Um, but it's quite tricky to get right because you've got to get all of your settings right in the um, in the recording software. Uh, and I just find it really, really hard. And half the time it doesn't work properly and people are seeing different things to me. So um, I tend to not bother and, and um, you know, I mean, I have released this image so people can download it and look at it but that's one of the reasons why I don't um, you know it's uh, it can be quite complicated doing recording you know I mean there are there are definite ways of doing it um, sort of quite simply you can do it with your phone and all of that type of stuff and and actually you know as long as your sound is okay uh, people tend to be you know okay with that um, but, um, you know, you will get times where people are a little bit, um, you know, get a little bit sort of frustrated, you know, if you haven't got things absolutely perfect. And it's, I can, I can understand, you know, I can understand that. Um, but, um, 
just remember I'm here struggling away trying to get everything set up and then like you know pulling my hair out when it doesn't work properly uh, right a little bit more in there we'll have to sort of add a bit more um, pigment I think so I'm just using really light strokes in here just to sort of bring in a little bit more definition in between some of these hairs but you can see you know when, when we start to sort of pull in these these little tiny details it means that we can get in between and start to you know really really work on um, some of the other details in there so this needs to be darker so this all needs to be darker. Let's just do a little bit more on that nose, I think. I'm just going to use this as the um, dark indigo that I'm just going to use into here. This is all quite dark up here as well. A bit of concentration going on. And then this is all dark. See, once you start putting your um, colour and everything round, then you can start to really sort of see how dark your darker areas need to go. So coming in and making the nose just a touch darker. If I'm going to do anything, it'll be making something not dark enough. Um, you know, and I think that's that's something that quite a lot of us struggle with. So, okay, let's bring that. That's a bit better. So we're actually getting the, the shape of his nose a bit better there. Yeah, it's quite quick. It's quite a quick one, this one, actually, um, Peggy. It's... Um, it's um i think because he's a, a a sort of like shaggy haired you know he's got really sort of messy hair um you know i don't need to be really really careful and i'm not adding a ton of layers either you know i'm going with sort of minimal layers really which has been quite nice really um the 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 time um will kind of increase as i start to build in the details um you know, but we've done, yeah, we've done quite a bit this morning, actually. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'll um, finish this live stream and then I won't do any more live streams. I'll, I will record the rest of it and then I'll just put the recording up onto um, YouTube so that, you know, you can follow the whole thing if you want. Um, and then you can kind of get an idea, you know, if you... Um, you can get an idea as well as to, you know, how to use your pencils if you're new to it, how to use your pencils, how to layer stuff, how to use your colours, all of that type of thing. It's, um, you know, I think it's quite good to be able to sort of see something. I know it's quite a long video or it will be quite a long video when it's done, but, um, you know, it's quite good to um, quite good to see how things are done, isn't it? You know, how different people use the pencils and, and their techniques and everything. So this is just the polychromos black that I'm using here. And I'm just going to darken up this area here. Really, really light pressure here. And it's, um, I'm wanting sort of quite a nice, soft texture, but it's not happening actually. It's a little bit liney. So probably because it's got a bit of a point on the end of it. Let's get rid of that point. Let's make it even worse. Oh, that's better. I just want a softer, wanted a softer point on the end of it so that it wasn't too, um, so I could get like a nice even texture on the top of the nose there. Did I go to art school? Um, well, I left school at 15. Um, in uh, 1985 so I left school 
uh, did my uh, my O levels, and then I went on to. I wasn't. I, I was. I mean, I wasn't stupid at all. I was very clever, but I didn't like school at all. Um, bit of a rebel, and um, I. I ended up going to the local college, um, and because I wasn't old enough. Oh, this isn't working at all. Because I wasn't old enough to do a foundation degree. Um, I ended up doing a, a BTEC national diploma in general art and design um, with the with the sort of the intention of going on and doing a, a degree in fine art, something at the end of the two years that I did. Um, but what what actually happened was um, I didn't I didn't enjoy it at all. Um, we did all sorts of different things. We did lino printing, we did photography, we did um, screen printing, we did you know all all those sorts of things. Um, but any time we did anything to do with sort of you know the creative things like the printing and all of that type of stuff, the, there was the the criteria was you know you weren't they didn't want you to do detail. Nothing was to be detailed. Everything had to be big, bold. Um, arty that type of stuff um, and that that wasn't me it just wasn't wasn't something that came naturally to me you know I the only the only area I excelled in was watercolor we did a course of I think it was four weeks of watercolor and there was a watercolor artist who came in and um, and mine was the best because we were doing these little tiny I think we were doing blackberries or something like that and um, because I could then start to do some really nice detailed work, um, you know, it that's that's then what kind of worked for me. Um, but it was frowned upon, you know, anything that was small, detailed, anything like that was frowned upon. Um, I mean, that my art tutor had me going and sitting in a disused railway siding underneath a railway carriage with charcoal drawing these like um railway tracks <laughs> you know and i was told you know they had to be big they had to be bold they had to be you know and it was just soul dist it was soul destroying so i ended up leaving at 17 um with a, a very poor portfolio um and i didn't get in anywhere um and and I'm not surprised I didn't get anywhere because I, was, I wasn't very good at it at all. Um, and my dad got me a job at a um, a local advertising agency. So I started as a tea girl at the age of 17. I think I was on something like £30 a week. Um, and um, I, I learned how to become a graphic designer and a typesetter. So I, I had my appendix out when I was 17 and I taught myself to type using my mum's old type typewriter. And I got myself a job at a, um, a local typesetters. And that's where I started to learn to use how to use the Mac. And I became an art worker. And that's what I did for many, many years is um, was a, an art worker on the Mac. Um, I was very good, actually. Uh, very fast typing. Very careful, very controlled. And I think that's where I get my my love of control and everything when I come to do my drawings. But yeah, the, the art for two years was like... A couple of years that not wasted obviously i mean you know i got something out of it but certainly didn't didn't um get you know do anything for my art at all and leaving at the age of 17 i then didn't pick up a pencil at all until the age of um well 2016 46 so um you know 30 years yes happy easter happy easter everybody It's it's bizarre, isn't it? All these, you know, there should be people going away all over the place and um, all staying at home. <laughs> so I'm just going to use my slice tool again, just to bring in a little bit of the um, this hair detail in here. Very gently. I'm not pressing down on the paper at all. I'm just um, going nice and gently to get some of those hairlines in and just break up that pigment a little bit. There we go, that's looking a little bit better. And we probably do need to kind of darken this nose bit up a little bit. 
come back and do that when I sort of touch everything back up again a bit later on. Darker into here as well. Yeah, so, you know, art school I think can be amazing, but for me it was um, a bit of a waste of time really. And we didn't, I didn't do anything like what I'm doing now. Um, you know, it's a shame, I think, that, you, you know, you should be forced to do something that doesn't come naturally to you. Um, you know, you'd, you'd think that they'd sort of um, try and bring out the best in everybody, wouldn't you? But it didn't really work that way. But then, you know, I always think things happen for a reason. So, you know, moving moving on from there and going and doing what I did then sort of like moving into management um, doing my coaching degree, all of that type of stuff, I think was all part of the bigger picture. Well, I know it was all part of the bigger picture, um, you know, for what I'm doing now, because everything's now come together. So everything that I've done in the past, I'm now kind of bringing together and utilising with what I'm doing now, you know. So, um, I mean, I, I would never have never have got into teaching workshops and stuff like that if I hadn't have gone down the route that I went down um you know I've, and I've actually got a, a qualification in teaching workshops <laughs> um you know how to um how to manage unruly people in a workshop space that was quite interesting getting to know all of the different sorts of people that will be in your workshop so um you know the the, the teaching side of things I, I really did enjoy um, right, that nose is looking a little bit better now, isn't it? So we need a bit more brown in. Use a bit of, use a bit of that. Use a bit of the burnt sienna, I think. Bring a little bit of the burnt sienna in in here, and get a little bit of this brown in. So. And then I think what I'll do is I'll um, I'll carry on drawing today. I'll carry on recording him, um, not not live, but just recording, and then put that up onto YouTube and get him finished today. Um, because actually, there's not a huge amount left to do. Um, you know, we've got quite a lot in there uh, already. I'm loving watching the whole process from start to finish in real time and nowhere else to go with lockdown. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Oh, hi, Patsy. Yeah, I know we're all we're all locked down. Can't go anywhere. So I've got a captive audience. <laughs> yeah, you're all uh, stuck with me. Drawing. Every time you go on the Internet, there's me drawing. <laughs> it's like, will she get off? So. I just thought it'd be nice just to, you know, I don't, I, uh, it's not something that I can, um, I can do very often as in sort of share a whole piece, um, you know, just because I'm so busy doing all of the other stuff. But, um, and, and this, this again, you know, is, is, you know, you, you get this type of stuff on my, you know, if you were to join my, my, um, my teaching channel, you'll get this sort of stuff on my teaching channel, but you don't get any of the, the, the chatting and the, you know that sort of stuff i only tend to well you do actually um it's when i'm doing something that you know if we've if if i'm drawing like a boring thing <laughs> uh something like a horse's neck or something you know where you know it just gets a bit boring going use this pencil and do this bit of layer and then you know it, because you kind of get to know what you what you're doing and you can watch the first bit and then you know so i end up sort of going off on a tangent then and talking about different things so um when I'm editing my videos and I'm I'm sort of listening to things back, I'm like, that's very interesting. Oh yes, I, I, that's very good. I've forgotten I'd said that. <laughs> Come out with these amazing things, um, but you know, just chat about stuff and chat about you know uh, art in general and social media and you know all of that type of stuff. Um, might be something that somebody's asked me a question, then I can go and um, you know I can sort of like talk about something like that when I'm uh, you know working on something that's a bit boring and we don't have to kind of just talk about all of the time so um, I'm doing um, somebody sent me a picture of a horse and she's not sure about the colours so I'm doing a video of that to um, kind of go go through the colours 
you know, uh, the colours that I would use and just to sort of talk about the, the pros and cons and all of that type of stuff. And that, that will be going up on Patreon, um, you know, to kind of show people how I choose colours and everything. So you get, I, I put I put quite a lot of effort into my Patreon. I, I must admit, I put quite a lot of um, information out there. I'm, I'm, I'm always there um, helping people. Like I say, I've been on talking to somebody from Australia this morning um you know i'll i'll be i'll always chat to somebody if they need help um you know so um it's quite nice it makes my it really breaks my day up it's um you know chatting to different people it's it's really quite nice do you ever join the dots forward they only come together in retrospect you can never join the dots forward yes exactly sorry karen i was just reading that thinking what well, yeah absolutely you can't you know you you can you can't plan what's going to happen nobody knows what's going to happen um but what you can do is you can really take advantage of what's happened um you know and kind of learn from those and i i like to be really open minded with what i do so i like to be um always positive um i mean there are days where i have like a you know minor meltdown but then you know I quickly sort of take a deep breath and carry on um you know but um yeah just opportunities so i'm i'm big on on picking up on opportunities and if you keep an open mind about stuff um you know the opportunities do tend to crop up a little bit more often um but i'm um I'm very lucky in that i'm not a worrier i don't worry about stuff um and i think i'm i am very very lucky in that respect you know i don't i don't tend to get stressed about things or anything like that um, you know, and I try to stay positive as well, you know, and I, I, I was talking to a, a good friend last night and I was saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I know it sounds awful, but I'm really loving this lockdown. <laughs> I'm just loving it. You know, I know there's horrible things going on in the world. I mean, there's always horrible things going on in the world, isn't there? But, um, you know, I'm, I'm loving that I'm, I'm here. I've got my children here. I've got my dogs here. I've got my art here. Um, I don't have to go out. I don't have to do anything. I, I, you know, I love it. So, you know, but then I always take a positive out of everything. So it makes it much easier. Um, now, what colour are we going to use there? So I think we're going to go back to the cocoa, I think. Um, going to try and finish mine. Once my orders come from Amazon, slice Mars razor. Oh, gosh. Um, Joni, you're going to be getting all of the stuff. You're going to be getting all of the stuff. You'll buy that and then you'll see something else on the internet and you'll be like, oh, I need to get that. <laughs> you'll be you'll be spending thousands on um, on coloured pencils. I've got a new set of coloured pencils coming today, actually. The um, Lyra Rembrandts, um, they're due for delivery today. Um, so I'm going to have a bit of a play with them because I've heard for a, for a cost-effective pencil, I've heard good things about them. So I thought I'd give them a bit of a test and a bit of a, a bit of a play. Um, so I think I'll do a little bit more. I don't even know what time it is. Eleven twenty. Don't know what time I started. Probably going for nearly two hours now. I think. Um, do a little bit more in here, and then I'll um, I'll stop. But I'll carry on recording and upload it, so you can you can watch the the final bit. This bit down here, which will be I mean very similar similar techniques. Well, my techniques on this one has just been a bit of a scribble here and a bit of a scribble there. It's just a load of scribbles. Um, sometimes it's easier to scribble though, isn't it? Sometimes it's, um, you know, not to get bogged down with like tons and tons and tons of detail, but he's coming together quite nicely actually. And you know, this is the first time I've ever drawn one of my animals. I find it incredibly hard um, to draw my animals. I think because you kind of know their personality don't you and you, you know that if you get something a little bit wrong and I wonder if because he's quite new to us you know we've only had him a sort of like a few months um I wonder if it's a little bit easier to draw him I don't know but I've never ever I've never drawn any of my animals you're the special one Vincent he's a very special one <laughs> bless him funny old thing he is um, and I think we might just come in and just smooth it all a little bit um, again this is the mark oh my 15 year old son has now started singing 
don't know whether you can hear him. <laughs> He's so funny. He's got a really nice voice, but he just sings away up in his bedroom. <laughs> he's a sweet boy. He's a sweet boy. He's um, twice the size of me. He's, he's really tall. Bless him. They're all such, they are really good. I'm very, very blessed with having such nice children. They're all very helpful and, uh, you know, very good company to have around, which is good. Yeah. Uh, will you let us know when you your final compilation I will do I will do uh, Joni what I'll do is I'll um, I'll put the final compilation up and then what I'll do is I'll put a um, I'll put like a little playlist together on YouTube and the bit that I did yesterday on Facebook I'll add that link in as well into the description well it's already added into the description of the first one that I did um, and then you can kind of watch the whole watch the whole thing i can't take the video from facebook sadly and put it into youtube but um you know hopefully you'll be able to watch it there so this this really is the most awesome tool so if you work on drafting film um i would highly recommend that you buy one of these it's the stadler mars razor um not not brilliant by any means on the drafting film as an eraser but absolutely fantastic for just smoothing and blending um, is really really good and just softening down everything um precious Vinny, <laughs> precious Vinny. he's very precious <laughs> uh he's really come together i think it's hard too it's somewhat easy to make it look like a dog but to make it look like a specific one yeah absolutely it's um and when it's yours as well you know you know their personality and everything and it is it's really tough um you know i think it would be um my old boy um Zaki died last year I still I still find it really difficult to talk about him and I can't look at photos of him um it is funny because he was a very peculiar dog uh he he was a Romanian rescue um and I have to admit as horrible as it sounds I would never I would never I don't think I could ever rescue um from well from anywhere again I, I found it really really hard he was a very very uh difficult boy we had him for seven years six seven years um and he was he was just wonderful but he had the most uh he was very difficult very difficult dog um to have as a family dog um but we adored him we loved him and and sadly he i, I think i think it, i think he was quite old when he went um but if i tried to draw him i just don't think i could I just don't think I could. I um, I was absolutely devastated when he, you know, when he when he left, and it was it, it wasn't we we didn't see it coming. It just happened really quickly. Um, so I think if I had to draw him, I I would find it really really hard. But drawing one of them when they're alive, I think is is easier. Um, and with Vinny, he he's got he's got a very nice little face actually. Um, and very interesting he's got an interesting face um so um you know he's been quite nice to draw but if i, I think i've had to draw slipper she's she's quite difficult because she's just got mad black curls so that would be a bit trickier i think but she's got she's got the most fantastic eyes um so i might have to i might have to get a photograph of her eyes and um and just do those but uh, yeah, I think it's easier to draw an animal that's still living, especially for me. I don't think I could cope with drawing one that um, that that's gone. But that, oh God, I, I don't think I realised how much I loved that boy actually, um, and uh, because he was so odd <laughs> and he was quite tricky. But I don't think I I actually really realised how much I loved him. Um, you know, he was. Um, he, he was my boy bless him as weird as he was a funny old thing and Vinny is very similar <laughs> we're like oh my god it's Zach incarnated in Vinny um so he's he's a bit of a uh, bit of a an oddball as well 
it's like when we when we meet well it's difficult at the minute when we're when we're walking and we meet people in the village now obviously we, we stand apart and say hello and everything but slippers used to sort of like going over for cuddles and all of that type of stuff so she finds that really hard that she's not allowed to go and cuddle people now um and Vinny just stands there and cries i just want to keep on going on my walk please can we keep going <laughs> doesn't want to talk and that's exactly what zach used to do it's um it's so funny maybe it's a boy thing how many pets do you have at the moment <laughs> um well i've got um i've got um Vinny and slipper so slipper is she'll be three this year um and she's she's a newfoundland cross poodle and then i've got Vinny, and he'll be one in july and then i've got um peggy who is our ragdoll cat um and she is 11 this year 12 this year so we've only got three and then we've got nelly um joining us in a couple of months and she is slipper's sister so she is again a newfoundland cross poodle but she's brown rather than black and white so if it was up to me i'd have hundreds and hundreds of pets um i used to have horses i used to have um two horses as well i used to do a lot of competing dressage and show jumping but um yeah i mean i've always had i've always had animals growing up um i grew up on a on a farm and um as a as a very young child like two i was always going missing and i'd be in with the sheep with the lambs so uh you know animals are i don't think i could i don't think i could cope if i didn't have animals they're they're you know incredibly important to me need to darken this up here a little bit this is the cold gray cold gray six that i'm using here just to sort of darken up and add a little bit more sort of texture into the fur in his nose here i think he's looking okay it's just looking a bit liney so i just need to i need to just get it smoothed out a little bit um s smooth it a bit Oh God, I'm well. I'm a crazy, crazy lady anyway. But yeah, I would be crazy dog lady. I think I'm. I'm known as the crazy artist with the big dogs. In my village, as you can see, it's coming a mile away with <laughs> my two, and then when we get Nelly, so that'll be that'll be three enormous dogs. So we've got quite a few big dogs in the village. Actually, we've got a, a Leon Burger that lives just up the road. Um, he's massive, absolutely massive. Bigger than bigger than my two, definitely. So I'm just start to bring in a little bit of detail in there. So this is the bit where I start to slow down and just start to gently put in these detail areas. And the film's so good for getting the details in. Right, so I am going to um, going to finish up, and then what I'll do is I'll carry on and do the do the rest, like I said on the video, and um, share it with you. But I'll do that not live. Um, I'll just record that as I go along um, and then I think what I'll do is I'll finish him today and then upload that for you and then you've got the whole the whole thing and then if any of you did think about you know joining me over on Patreon you kind of know what you're what you're getting um, the other thing as well that's that I've found is amazing with with Patreon I, d I don't know whether other um, other people find this as well but the um the people i meet and the community that's building alongside it is is incredible and what's happened what happens is you get these amazing artists 
that that join my Patreon, and then we have these sort of they just start to help other people, and you just get this really lovely community around you. It's um, it's it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant, and I never realised that would happen. You know, when I first started my Patreon, I never realised that would actually happen. I thought I'd just be putting videos out every month and that'd be it, but actually, it's there's so much more um, to it, and you you get to meet the most amazing people. So it's um, you know it's a it's a really nice place to be actually. Right. Okay. So I'm going to um, no problem, Joni. I am going to um, I'm going to finish there. I think we've done quite a quite a lot today. Um, and then I'll finish up. Uh, I'll finish up the bottom bit. Um, looking forward to doing his little chinny chin chin, and um, and I'll pop that up onto YouTube for you. Um, oh, bless you, Peggy. Well, I'll I'll hopefully hopefully see you there. Um, and um, happy Easter, everybody. And watch out for the um, you know the update of the 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 finished piece. And um, I shall see you all soon.